Tori, your daughter is in front of our house right now for some reason. Can you explain why this is? I'm sorry, but six in the morning is way too early to have her over. And I don't remember inviting her over to our house anyways. Why did you leave her after all, by herself in front of our house? Tori, you need to answer right now. Ugh, can you please stop spamming my phone? Do you know what time it is? What do you want? That's my line! Why do you leave your daughter all by herself at a time like this? She was freezing when I answered the doorbell. What kind of mother does that to her own daughter? Where are you right now? And where is Andrea? I'm getting worried about what you might have done to her, judging by what you've done to Valerina. Please, just give me an explanation about the whole situation. Oh yeah, about that. I'm leaving Valerina for you guys to raise. She just isn't worth my effort, you know? I hope you guys have a good time together, though. Sorry about the late notice. What? What do you mean, raise? I don't know what makes you think this is a time to be joking around, but you need to stop. If you wanted us to let her stay at our house, then you should have at least let us know a day in advance. Even Valerina's crying because she thinks that you left her for good. Well, she's right about crying. Because that's exactly what I mean. I need you to raise her from now on. As in, like, she isn't coming back to our house anymore, so you need to give her food and shelter and education and stuff. She's not our child, she's yours. What? You can't just leave your child at our house and claim that we have to raise her from now on. That has to be some typical child abuse. I mean, you could sue us and bring her back to our house, but as you can tell from the situation right now, I do not care about that child, and she's just gonna have a very miserable life ahead. And if you don't take the role of raising her, she'll probably end up at some orphanage and live an even more miserable life. So, it's up to you. You're sick. How could you do this to this beautiful child? Shame on you. Say whatever you want. You can either take responsibility in making her happy, or just sit back and watch her life fall apart. Why are you doing this to her? Look, as you know, my husband died last month. And as a single mother, do you really think I can afford to raise two kids? While well, working to make money at the same time? Even with the inheritance that my husband left behind, the best I can do is provide a living for one of them. That's a problem for you to figure out. And abandoning one of them is definitely not the way. There's only so much that a part-timer can do, you know? I can only feed two mouths, and one of those is mine. Then why don't you ask your parents to help you out a bit? Oh my god, I hate my parents. I would rather die than rely on them. How ungrateful of you to say that. As I've said before, say whatever you want. Please be my guest. I don't care. So, given all of the information that I mentioned above, I realized that I could only raise one child, and the other child should be raised by someone more facilitated, which turned out to be you. Come on, you're my husband's younger sister and Andrea's aunt. Come to think of it, Andrea's basically your own daughter. What are you on right now? There's no way that you really think that logic is going to justify all of this. I'm sure your husband is going to be excited about having a daughter, too. But this isn't our child. You said that you would support me in whatever way necessary at the funeral. This is the help that I need right now, so I need you to cooperate. But this is all so sudden and out of nowhere. Have you at least tried to ask for support by the government or something? There's tons of ways to help raise your children and scholarships, and child support. It's too much of a hassle to go through all of that paperwork. And I don't have the time to be dealing with all of that right now. 
You can't tell me that you can't do even that for your own children. Please get your priorities straight. This isn't the same thing as buying a puppy. We're talking about your own child here. It's just easier to make you raise her. Therefore, it makes more sense to just do that. Come on, quit being so stubborn and help out a sister. I would have helped you out with all of the paperwork that you needed if you had just said it was what you needed. It isn't too late. Let's go to the city hall together and see what kind of financial support you're eligible for. How could you abandon Ballerina all by herself like this? I mean, if it came down to choosing one of the two, I'm pretty sure that anyone would have chosen Andrea. I would never choose one of my kids over the other. Everyone says that until they're actually demanded to make the decision. Ballerina is always whining about something and never shuts up. On top of that, she's so slow and dull in the mind. She won't do me any good even if I keep her, so I'm letting her go. Whether a child does you any good or not, it's a parent's responsibility to love and protect the child. How dare you label your own kids like that? You can say whatever you want, but when it comes down to making a choice, the answer is always obvious. Andrea never complains, and she's always smiling. She is so unproblematic, so I'm sure she has a far better chance of making it in any type of job. Therefore, I'm investing in her. What do you mean by investing in her? I'll raise her for now, and once she's able to get a good job, she can make all of the money which I'll live off of. It's a great plan, isn't it? You're really going to isolate your daughter from her sister and make her work like a slave? Are you serious? Of course I am. They say work smarter, not harder. This is my smartest way out of being poor. You're crazy. I'm really not. It's the child's job to take care of their parents. And Andrea has a far better chance in making lots of money. Therefore, it's only natural that I put in more effort for her instead of Valerina. That's why I gave you the stupid one. Good luck raising her! I've never met anyone as obnoxious as you. You know that? I feel horrible for Andrea for being chosen and forced to stay with you. Our family has our own plans too. We can't just take Valerina in and make it work. Please just come to our house so we can discuss all of this. If you can't come, then I'll drive Valerina over to your house. Which would you prefer? What about neither? Andrea and I are moving today. So, I'll never see you again. Sorry. What? We can't afford to keep living in the apartment we used to live in. So, I decided to take my daughter and move into a cheaper place. It's a bit far away from here, but my friend owns the place so I can live there for practically free. Isn't it amazing? That friend's going to introduce me to a new workplace too, so I'm basically well off at my new location. We're resting at a restaurant by the highway right now, so I won't be coming back. So you're just texting me to stall until you got on the highway? I mean, you would have brought her back if I left you an option, so... Come on. When you come to think of it, this is the best for all of us. The girl wouldn't have been treated well if she was stuck with us. And you like kids? It's all for the best. A parent is supposed to give their life to stay by their child, not to sell them away because they don't need them. Well, I guess I'm not your practical parent then. Look, the house that we used to live in isn't ours anymore. And I have no intention in coming back. So, might as well have fun raising the girl. She's a bit dull, but she's still fun to mess with. You got this. This has to be illegal in some way. Hey, don't do this to your daughter. Don't do this to us. Just tell me where you are right now. I'll head there, so please just tell me. Not a chance, honey. I know you're trying to push Valerina back to me. Won't let that happen. <laughs> She's yours now, so treat her well. 
I hope y'all have a happy future together. Bye bye I'm not done with you! Hey! Tori! You don't have to do this! Hey, Bella! Long time no see, right? How have you been? I'm sorry, who is this? Oh, don't tell me you've forgotten about me! It's me, Tori! You know, your legal sister? The wife of your older brother? Come on, we both know you remember me. Quit playing dumb. I actually do not remember you. Or maybe it's just that I'm instinctively dismissing the existence of the horrifying person who abandoned her own daughter after my older brother died ten years ago. Neither me, my husband, or our beloved daughter Valerina can recall you. Sorry. See, you do remember. How have you been? I can't believe you actually went out of your way to raise her instead of abandoning her. Props to you, girl. What do you want? After all of these years, without giving us a single call or text, not even checking on Valerina at all, the audacity you have to be talking to us right now. Don't tell me you've reached out to us after all these years just to check on her. She doesn't need you anymore. She understands well that you don't care and that we do. Why would I go out of my way just to do that? I'm not as bored as you might think. What do you want then? Can you give Valerina back to me? What? She's already 15 and she's not a child anymore. So I'll have her work for my friend's store. Starting next year, so I need her back. Are you hearing yourself right now? Of course I am. Loud and clear. Then I'd assume that even a crazy person like you would understand that I would say no, right? You're the one who left her behind at our house in the first place. You have no right to be asking us to let her go back to being with you. She's practically a daughter to us, and we would never make her go through such a thing. Yeah, yeah, I get it. As much as I'd like to say you're right, I really need another worker right now. So please, give her back. What happened to your other worker? Oh, Andrea? Well, she ran away from me last night. Ran away? Yeah. I started online gambling as a game to pass some time, but I got a bit carried away. And now I'm stuck with a bunch of debt. So I told Andrea to work instead of studying for college. And she ended up running away. What the hell are you doing? Is it that hard to be a decent parent? Apparently so. So can I have Valerina back? What kind of adult would let a child enter that environment? No. My answer is no. So please don't contact us ever again. Okay. Let me rephrase it. I'm demanding you to give me my daughter back. You have no right to say no to this request. She's not your child. She is my child, and I have the legal rights as her parent. And Valerina has the responsibility to help me pay back my debts as my child. Got it? Actually, Valerina is our child. Legally. But I never signed any papers. As soon as you left her with us, we went through a legal procedure to adopt her. So now she's ours, and we have no right to hand her over. What? She is our daughter of my husband. So good luck paying back all of your debts alone. What? You can't just do that. Without the permission of me? I'm her mother. She is my daughter by blood. This whole thing should be illegal. It really isn't. There's a way to adopt a child without permission of the parent. I won't go to any specifics since you probably won't understand any of it anyways. But we were legally admitted as eligible for becoming family through court. And you and Valerina are legally strangers. You're lying! You can't do that! 
I'm her real parent. She still has to listen to me. Actually, she doesn't. We didn't just adopt her. We went through a foster care adoption process. Which basically means that there is no legal tie between you and your daughter anymore. This actually requires the agreement of a real parent. But since you were gone for so many years, the court decided that you were incompetent in making a decision upon this case. Therefore, we didn't need your agreement to make the decision to go through. Valerina is our child, and I will protect her from you with my life. You will never lay a finger on her ever again. Then who's gonna help me pay back my debts? I can't just do it on my own. How am I supposed to get out of this? I guess you're going to have to work on your own. You can't just keep relying on your kids and other people including them forever. Just help yourself and you'll be fine. Then what was the point of giving birth to two daughters? There's no point in having kids if they're useless to me when I need them. I won't let this happen. I will not allow this. You know what? You need to resolve the adoption, go through the legal procedures, and make her my daughter again. No way. I don't like paperwork. And I'm too lazy to go through that whole process, so... <laughs> Quit messing around! I'll be on my way to bring Valerina back. You better be ready! Where are you headed to? To your house! Do you know where our house is? The place I dropped Valerina off 10 years ago? I'm sorry to tell you this, but our family actually moved to another state a few years ago because of my husband's work. So you won't find us at our old house. Sorry. What? How dare you move without telling me? This is my kid that you're dragging with you. I deserve to know where she is whenever I want. Again, she's not your daughter. Why is it always me? Why do bad things always happen to me? Why can't everyone just do what I ask them to do? Help me. Please. I can't pay off my debts alone. I'll be stuck working for the rest of my life. As strangers, we have no responsibility to helping you. Sorry. Why not? Why don't you take a deep breath, close your eyes, and ask yourself, Have I really done nothing to be deserving this right now? I'm sure you'll be able to get yourself an answer. Since I'm done addressing this situation, I'll be going now. I'm sure neither I nor Valerina will ever be seeing you again. So, farewell. Apparently, Tori tried to go and look for Valerina and Bella, but wasn't able to do anything since she couldn't pay for the gas to get anywhere. After that, she tried to work her butt off to pay back her debts, but ended up borrowing even more money because of her online casino addiction. After reaching out to illegal sources or money laundering, she was caught by the members of a gang and was forced to work as a prostitute. After acting upon impulse, Tori ended up getting herself in a living hell situation. Not that she didn't deserve it. <laughs> FYI, Andrea was taken to her grandparents' house after a few days since she ran away from her mother. And now she lives with her grandparents and goes to high school like any other student. Valerina is also a high school student now, and she's pursuing her dreams as a nurse, going to school every day with her friends. In the end, I'm extremely grateful that everyone ended up at a better place. And I think everyone other than Tori is glad about how things ended up. Hey, you better have everything ready for the welcome party for the newcomers. Especially that presentation. I'll dock your pay if you can't entertain me well enough. <laughs> Don't forget the catering and the music, too. Hello, Simon. A welcome party. To be honest, I don't think I can do that right now. I have a lot on my plate at the moment. I also think we're not really in a good position to welcome anybody at the moment. What are you talking about? Ugh, you're always acting like you're so busy when you barely do anything at all. 
How can you call yourself part of our team? How dare you neglect your responsibilities? You're such a disgrace. Tuh. Well, I'm really busy. You should know how busy I am, since you're the one giving me most of my work. And we haven't been getting as many sales as we'd like to, have we? That's your responsibility as the salesperson, isn't it? You're supposed to be going out every day to make sales, aren't you? What on earth are you doing? You're just probably slacking off somewhere, aren't you? What, are you sneaking around with some girl while you're on the clock? Of course not. I'm making sales in my own way. But if I'm the only one doing it, there's a limit to how much I can do. I can't do five things at the same time. So, in other words, it is your fault. It's your fault that work isn't going well. If you can't get the preparations for the welcome party done, that just means you don't know how to arrange your schedule properly. I'm sorry about that. I'm trying really hard to balance everything. But I'm also working during the time I'm supposed to have off. I don't mean to be rude, but you also don't really go out to make sales either, do you? You're always in your office. Does that mean you're doing well? Obviously. I don't even pay too much attention to my sales numbers. That just shows how many sales I'm making. After all, I can't do anything that would take work away from the younger people. You all are the ones who should be going out for sales. That's why I'm giving out orders from the sales office instead. I feel as though we should be trying to make as many sales as we can. The more sales we make, the better. It's not really about taking people's work. It's about working together as a company to meet goals regardless of your position. That's just my opinion, though. What? Are you trying to tell me how to do my job? Who's the boss here? No, I'm not. I'm just saying that we generally have low sales right now. I just think we could try and send more people out. It would be very difficult, impossible even, to meet our goals if it's just me going out. Maybe you just need to work harder. Or maybe you can work during your lunchtime. Now, there's a suggestion. <laughs> oh yeah, I wanted to tell you something. You shouldn't be taking days off without permission, you know. What? What do you mean? I didn't take any days off without permission. Are you telling me you saw the word weekend and actually thought it was the end of your week? <laughs> what do you mean by that? We're supposed to get weekends off, aren't we? You must be joking! <laughs> There's no way. This isn't a little high school part-time job. This is the real world. You think young people like you get to rest on weekends? During our busiest season? Stop messing with me. Weekends are there for you all to come to help your superiors. So of course you have to come to work. What? I've never heard that rule before. Did you all make that rule sometime this year? I'm the one who made the rule, clearly. There's a hierarchy if you didn't know. As my subordinate, your purpose in this company is to make my life easier. So you definitely can't be slacking off. Come on, you can do better than that. What? I'm supposed to come in on the weekends. I've worked three different office jobs since graduating college, and none of them were like that. Sorry to break it to you, but this isn't just an office job. This is serious business. So you should know that much. When you're lounging around on Sundays, nursing a hangover or whatever it is you do, your superiors are still working. I thought it was because we all have different shifts. That's how it is anywhere else. Stop making all these excuses. That's why we can't make any sales. The more time you waste, the less sales we make. It's obvious. I'm really not so sure about this. You're working overtime today anyways, aren't you? I'll give you until tomorrow. So you better have those party preparations and the presentation ready in the morning. I'll be waiting. Huh? Tomorrow morning? I'm not sure if I can do that, if I'm being honest. It's already almost 5pm. You had all the time in the world to do it before. You were just loafing around. Plus, 5pm is still early. It's plenty of time if you ask me. I still have so much other work to do. Could you at least get someone to help me with the party, please? Help you? Everyone's too busy with their own work. This was your responsibility. But anyways, this is more important. Some of the new employees coming in for the welcome party are women. You want to show them our good side, don't you? We need to impress them to make sure they want to stay in our company. Well, I'm not really thinking about things like that. If that presentation isn't good, 
Those women will have a bad impression of me. I know you can do it. I'm not sure if that matters. Of course it matters. First impressions are everything. Especially when it comes to women. You do well to remember that. Anyways, we're all going out for drinks after that, so I'll be counting on you for that prep too. We need a good restaurant. Make sure it isn't cheap. You're going out for drinks. Okay, fine. I'll think about it for tomorrow. Hello, Alex. That was a really good meeting today. I always really enjoy your meetings. You did an amazing job, and that presentation was top-notch. I was really impressed. I can't wait for the next one. Thank you very much, Beverly. I really appreciate your kind words. I'm the one who should be thanking you. I appreciate your attendance and helpful advice. I'm glad I could help out. You seemed a little tired today, though. Your face looked really pale. Are you all right? Maybe you've been working too hard? What? Really? I'm sorry, you really don't have to bother worrying about me. Although, I have been very tired recently, if I'm being honest. Yesterday, a lot of things were happening at work and I didn't find time to sleep. Ah, you've been really busy, haven't you? Having work and being busy is a good thing, but it doesn't make sense if you work yourself to death. That's true. I'm trying to rest as much as I can, but... I guess you can say if I rest, the company could be in danger. Oh, really? There's so many good employees there, though. Maybe you can get some of them to find time to help you out? I've already asked, but everyone is too busy with their own schedules to help me. Really? That's too bad. So many of the employees there are so reliable and hardworking. Ah, but that man who came to our company to make a sale a couple years ago wasn't that great. I'm definitely sure I saw him today. I think he's probably your boss now, though, funnily enough. Oh, really? I didn't know anyone from our company has visited you before. That's right. But that man, Simon Andrews, was it? I never got the feeling that he was that into it. I felt like he gave up quite easily, to put it simply. He never chased after a sale. Once he was told no, he was done. I was very close to moving on from working with this company. I didn't like the feeling that our business relationship wasn't on the same level. But since you started working there, I've changed my mind. I love how straightforward and passionate you are when you sell. I saw so much potential in you. Well, thank you so much, Beverly. Hearing that from you makes me feel a lot better. It sounds like your current company is too harsh. Plus, you said the business situation isn't looking too good. Would you be interested in working for my company? I feel like you could be a valuable asset to our team. Our workload is probably a little bit heavier, but we have four-day weeks and plenty of vacation, so you shouldn't ever have to worry about overworking yourself. What? I'm honored that you would even consider asking me. But... I specifically chose this company, so I'd like to try stay here for a little longer. That's great. I like that about you, too. You're a very loyal and determined young man. But it's okay. I understand. If you ever change your mind, let me know. I'll make sure our doors will always be open for you. Thank you so much. I'm really glad you asked me. It's always nice to be recognized for working hard. I'll keep in touch. Thank you again. Please enjoy the rest of your evening. Hey, slacker. Did you have fun relaxing and forgetting about your responsibilities? I hope you're looking forward to coming in this morning. <laughs> I sure am. Simon, I don't understand what seems to be the problem. I wasn't slacking off. I had to go to the hospital for a stomach ulcer. I told you multiple times. I'm coming back today, so I will see you later. I'm sorry for causing any trouble. That's all you do. <laughs> This company doesn't need someone like you. This is the first time I've ever met someone who causes this much trouble. But I left a little gift on your desk celebrating your return. <laughs> what do you mean? You've been going on and on about how you're in the hospital for a stomach ulcer, so I got a funeral candle for you and left it on your desk. <laughs> You've been out for three whole days, so I've decided to fire you. Come get your candle and get out. What? Are you being serious? With all due respect, did you expect me to work in my condition? 
Of course I'm serious. I wouldn't joke about something like this. <laughs> Besides, any man should be able to handle a little ulcer. If you absolutely had to stay in the hospital, you could have at least done remote work on your laptop. You've been so irresponsible. I've had it with you. I expect to see your letter of resignation on my desk before lunch and that candle and the rest of your stuff out of my sight by the end of the day. I hate to say it, but this company is going to fall apart, you know. Ha! <laughs> That's what literally everyone says when they're fired. You're incompetent. Shut the hell up and leave. <laughs> I see. I'll take over everything you are in charge of. Along with all of the commissions, of course. <laughs> it's all going to go great. I hope so. Well, I'll take you up on your offer and quit then. Alex, what are you trying to pull? Ever since you left, this place has been falling to pieces. This is all your fault. My fault? What are you talking about? I'm pretty sure I told you very clearly things were going to fall apart if I left. But you clearly didn't believe me and foolishly thought you could turn this company around on your own. I didn't think you were serious. You should have told me sooner. I've made a terrible mistake. I take everything back. You have to come back and fix this mess. I didn't find it necessary to go into details. <laughs> After all, you were deliberately trying to take credit for my work and steal my commissions. It wouldn't have been fun for me if I told you everything. Well, I didn't know we were so close to bankruptcy. The companies you were in charge of were just barely keeping the business afloat, and now that you're gone, they've ended their contracts. I don't understand. Why won't they do business with me? What did you tell them? All of the companies were amazing, so if you were a decent person, I'm sure they would have kept the contracts. I think that attitude of yours is the problem here. You think you're better than everyone else. Like, what is up with that? I'm the one with the attitude problem. Listen to yourself. Not only that, I heard you jumped ship right over to Presco. No wonder they wouldn't budge no matter how much I tried to speak to them. That's funny. Beverly told me pretty much the exact opposite of that. She said you gave up way too easily. You'd think you would try harder considering the company's future was on the line. That's enough out of you, traitor. You sabotaged us. Why else would you join in such a high position? Chief Sales Officer. What a joke. I guess it's because I'm an excellent worker. Get over yourself. You must want me to tell them how many times you used your sales time to fool around. Tell them anything you want. I don't think they'd believe anything you said anyways. <laughs> but for real though, Beverly saw how hard I work and offered me a position even before you decided to force me out. What? They lured you away from us. They're not allowed to do that. That is not the case. At first, I declined the offer. But when you told me to quit, I couldn't believe it. It didn't matter how hard I worked. Everything would have just been taken from me. Nothing I did was good enough for you. Okay, fine. I admit you did a decent job while you were here. But since you left, business has taken a nosedive and now we're bankrupt. So, tell them to hire me too. I can't work here anymore. Excuse me? <laughs> You think that's the type of attitude to have when begging someone for something? Absolutely not. You never spoke to me like this before. You were always so passionate about your job. What happened to you? Oh, where is this sudden flattery coming from? My passion for sales hasn't changed, but in terms of work, I don't want to be involved with you anymore. So I have no reason to pretend to be all polite to you anymore. What did you say? Just because you got hired by a good company, you think you're all that. Just watch. I'll get myself hired by an even better company. I'll make you eat your words, you little brat. Really? I'd love to see you try. <laughs> I don't think you have a chance with any of the companies in this area, though. What's that supposed to mean? Well, Simon, you're becoming quite famous around these parts. In a bad way, though. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? I haven't done anything wrong. It's a good thing the company was going bankrupt anyway, or I imagine the lawsuits would have done them in. You tried to force yourself onto one of the new women after happy hour, didn't you? Another employee got everything on video, and she said she was going to file a report to the police. What? What the hell? I was drunk, and just tried to have some fun with the ladies, but I didn't touch them. I didn't mean any harm. 
If you think anyone's going to believe those lame excuses, you're sadly mistaken. It's pretty gross to touch another person's body without consent, much less one of your subordinates. I can't believe you've stooped to such a low level. I knew you were a lazy blowhard, but I didn't think you were a sexual predator as well. It's painfully embarrassing to know that someone like you is my boss. Hold on a second. I was just trying to be friendly. After we went bankrupt, a lot of people quit. I was trying to form business connections so we could keep in touch. Saying that I forced myself on them is blowing things out of proportion. It was just a friendly conversation. I always noticed you were looking at some of the women strangely, and you said some weird stuff. But now that you've actually put your filthy hands on them, you're done for. I said that's not what happened. The video footage we have as evidence speaks for itself. The only thing you might be left with is a criminal record, but those ladies will always have those emotional scars you gave them. I hope you never forget that. Wait, don't call me a criminal. It's not like I killed anybody or anything. But you are a criminal. I always thought you were a malicious person, but now I realize my hunch was correct. You are just my old scumbag boss who has no morals. I really hope you get what's coming to you, you sick pervert. After that, there was a local news report about Simon. And just as I said, he became famous for all the wrong reasons. Simon applied to literally every company in town, but he was rejected everywhere he went. Eventually, he had no choice but move away and start over somewhere completely new. He's powerless, but still acts big. He abuses his authority to chase down young women. It was only a matter of time until he found himself in a situation like this. Hopefully, with that news report and the video uploaded to social media, he can never outrun his history. As for the company, after they went bankrupt, they were unable to recover. Over 40 people lost their jobs. Beverly tried her very best to help some of them with vacant positions here at our company, but we were only able to hire about seven people. Simon holds the responsibility for all those people with families losing their jobs, but he only cares about himself. I pray that all those people are able to get back on their feet.